to do in this moment is to study a word that we studied and we saw some days ago, which was the expression or the verb released. Okay, that's the verb that we are going to study today. According to the definition, everybody take uh, take note on or, or take your vocabulary and look for the word release. If I go to the dictionary and look for the word release, the dictionary will give me the verb in present. When actually, we clearly have here the verb in past. In the vocabulary that we saw about the cinema, the word release, I managed it as a proof. And look at the definition. Release, regular verb, usually passive. Today, we are going to learn what's the meaning of this. What's the meaning of usually passive? Because many verbs that we study are usually passive. I have a question before we continue. Who knows what is passive? What is a passive verb? Or who is familiar with the expression passive voice? Tell me. Passive voice teacher, I remember when you put first the action and after the people that do this action, maybe, I'm not sure. You put after the people who do, who does. Does, sorry. Do, sorry, the people who do. do. No, yes, who do because do. people is plural. Uh -huh. The people who do the action goes after the word, the verb. Right. And why you are actually correct. Eh? We mentioned this specific word in previous classes. And I want to check if you remember why. Why do we use this strategy? I remember the release by mm -hmm. and I. Uh by a specific uh, movie. If I don't remember, we use this word in the, in the previous video, no? Mm -hmm. Released by and then the studio, no? Uh, yes. Good. So, okay, you are very, very close to the, to the information. That's the way we use it. And today we are going to learn the purpose. What is the application of this a structure when we speak. Because remember that everything that we are going to say will have a purpose, especially a context. We need to study the context of the conversation so you can know when to use passive voice and when not to use passive voice. So today we are going to get the difference between release and released and how to identify passive verbs okay in order to understand this i am going to use some material that i took from the new york times twitter account in this post you can see the headliners of three different um newspapers and how newspapers have a very close connection with passive voice, okay? So here you have Minneapolis, Washington DC, and Louisville. Do you know what is Minneapolis, Washington DC, and Louisville? Does anybody know this? No, nobody? 
Minneapolis, Washington DC, and Louisville are three cities. Let's go to maps. Minneapolis, USA is a city, one of the counties in the state of Minnesota. Okay. Minneapolis is over here. Washington, D.C. is a little bit farther. It's this section, right? It's a city that is in, this, in the state of Maryland. Okay, Washington is in Maryland. What was the other? I lost the other one. Louis so Minneapolis is in a different state, right? Here's Maryland. And Louisville. is a city that is over here in the state of Indiana. Very near Kentucky, but it's part of Indiana. It's this section over here, right? So here you have three different cities from three different locations. And the reason I'm speaking about cities of the United States is because we are going to analyze news today. In the news, there was a problem with this woman who got into an accidental crash with her eye. Unfortunately, this poor woman lost her eye. And the headliners that you see over here speak about the way she lost her eye. The problem is that the three newspapers have different stories, you know? Look at this structure. According to Minneapolis, a photographer was shot in the eye. Do we know who shot her in the eye? No. no, we don't know, right? That becomes a little problematic because we have no idea who shot her, but we know that she got a shot in the eye. So this is very important because Minneapolis is not telling you who affected this woman making the news a little bit less important, making the, 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 the person who affected the woman is not important for Minneapolis. But then we have the second headliner. Washington DC says that protesters struck a journalist with his own microphone they have they even have problems because they are saying that the woman was actually a man and who struck this person with a microphone anyone protesters protesters correct so in this story Protesters are the problem. You see? This is where the story becomes a little bit dark. Because in the third paragraph, Louisville says a different story. Louisville says that a reporter was hit by a pepper ball on live television by an officer who hit the woman in this case. An officer. An officer. And, and who is an officer? What kind of 
who do they represent the officer? Police, cops, <laughs> cops and police. So according to this story, the police is violent. What a massive difference on the three headliners that we see. No? The first newspaper is not giving importance to the person who struck it, probably because they don't want problems with the police. The second headliner is giving the, the, the responsibility to protesters, so nobody can, can really say anything about her problem. She lost her eye, but it was because she was in the incorrect place, and that's her fault, according to the second paragraph. But the third paragraph says that it was the police. So in this case, there is a responsible, and we can go for measures. All this is idiomatic and linguistic application of passive voice. If we use passive voice, we are going to give a different emphasis to the person who does the action. If it's very important to say it, we are going to put it in the subject of the sentence. You know? Let's talk about it. In the first example, the most important information is a photographer. The subject is always the main focus point. But in the second example, it's passive voice. Passive voice is a structure that gives emphasis to the person affected by the action. In the case, in the first and the final example, we are giving more emphasis to the reporter. Okay. So this is the first thing that I need you to take a note. The purpose of passive voice. What is the purpose of passive voice? To give emphasis to the person affected by the action. Okay. That's the first note that I need you to take into consideration. Observations and questions for the moment. Do you see the purpose of passive voice? Do you understand this purpose right now? Not really. Not really? No. On the first sentence is a normal sentence <laughs> without uh, passive voice. Mm -hmm. And the second one has passive voice. Right? <laughs> the, 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 uh, the second one is normal. This is... Uh -huh. Washington DC is a normal sentence, normal between. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And the third one is with passive voice. <laughs> correct. Correct, correct, correct. Yes. Why? Why? Excellent <laughs> question. Excellent question. Let's take a note. Let's move this, this information and let's take it over here. The first sentence. No, the, the, the only one that is a normal sentence. Right, which is person verb complement is the second one. Okay, because the first one is a passive sentence, which is using 
the person affected, then the verb, then the verb was, and then the verb in past participle. And then the complement. If you analyze the construction of the sentence, it's actually a different construction. Mm -hmm. Why does this happen? This is the why. Because in the first example, we are giving emphasis to the photographer. And in the second example, we are giving emphasis to the protesters. The interesting thing is how the affected person is in the second, or is the, the position, the, the changed position. The affected person is in the other position in this case. And the third example contains the connector of author. What is the connector for author? By. Actually, wait, wait, wait. This is uh, the third one is past. Yeah. Connector by. And then the do. Okay. So the most important thing that we need to, to think for the three components that we are going to play with, we are going to play with three different components. Number one, who does the action is the person, all right? This is going to be our subject, okay? Number two, who received the action, in this case, the person that was affected, grammatically is called the object. Okay. And the third component that connects these two things together is something called the verb, the transitive verb. In a moment, we are going to see what is a transitive verb. These are the three components that we are going to play with when we are talking using passive voice. The object, the subject, and the verb. And we are going to start alternating these three components in different ways. Let's talk about it. Structure number nine, changing the relevance on the subject of the sentence. Let's begin with the reading. Help me with this. Uh, Mitch, help me with this information. Mm. Structure nine, changing relevance on the subject of the sentence. Sorry, teacher, I can read uh, all sides. This, uh, oh, there sorry. is a window. <laughs> There's a window. You're yes. right. 
Okay. Uh, Louisville. Lu Louisville. Louisville. Uh -huh. That doesn't sound. Louisville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A reporter was hit by a pepper ball on live television by an officer who appeared to be aiming at her. Aiming is this. I am aiming. Oh, at her. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. An officer hit a reporter, active voice. This is called active voice when the subject is more relevant than the object. This is the didactic English format that we have been learning all the way through. Mm -hmm. A reporter was hit by an officer, passive voice. Passive voice is formed by the verb be and the original verb in past participle form. We are transforming the original verb into a description. Yeah. And this is the first thing that I need you to practice. Because if you are talking about the verb, uh, of course, when you think about an idea, the first thing that we consider is person verb complements. This is the standard uh, structure that we have been studying. So if you consider that was is a verb and hit is a verb, then the, the, the structure, she was hit by a pepper ball is very confusing because it's was is a verb and hit is a verb. We have a problem over here. I need you to mentalize that when you use was plus past participle, the past participle is a description, is working as a description. So you can transform the original verb into a description. Let's try with other examples. If you use a word, for example, a make, that's a, that's a very, very important, very classic verb. If you use the verb make, and we say, um, who makes the most delicious donuts in Mexico? Does anyone know who makes the most delicious donuts in Mexico? What's your favorite donuts provider? Your, your favorite donut dealer? <laughs> Um, maybe I'm not sure if what delicious or not, but it's that I know. <laughs> uh, Krispy Kreme Krispy was Kreme. done, the uh, uh, donuts or the best okay. donuts in Mexico. Let's talk about that structure. Mm -hmm. Krispy Kreme is the doer of the action, mm -hmm. right? Use the verb make to speak about the donuts. Mm -hmm. Who makes the most delicious donuts in Mexico? Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Berf? Uh, made. Made. Uh, the in past. Uh, no, it's made. It's in past participle, but I don't remember if it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But why no. in past participle? <laughs> no. Uh, no We're it's... talking about the subject, the door of the action. Is a subject, right? Okay. So who makes the most Chris. delicious donuts? Uh, Krispy Kreme makes the exactly. most delicious donuts. That is giving emphasis to the subject. When you mm -hmm. use the verb impressed. Yes. 
or you can use the Bourbon Past. Krispy Kreme made the most delicious donuts. But that's emphasis on Krispy Kreme. Mm -hmm. If we make emphasis on the donuts, the structure becomes different. This is the second part. When we collocate the object, sorry. And then afterwards, we use the connector by, which is optional, and then the subject. So let's use the same structure, Carla, but now let's give emphasis to the donuts. The best donuts are, are made. Uh, Yes. Bye, Christopher. Bye. That's it. Now you get it? Yes. <laughs> so it's not only about the um it's not only about the birth. It's actually about the purpose. The purpose of the birth. Who are we giving emphasis to? Are we giving emphasis to the subject or are we giving emphasis to the object? In other words, are we giving emphasis to the donut or are we giving emphasis to Krispy Kreme? Um, this is the, the, the donut. In this case, donuts, right? But mm -hmm. that's on you. You decide. Okay. The interesting part about advanced conversation and intermediate mm -hmm. is that you mm -hmm. need to select when to use passive voice because you know what intention you want to give. Uh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is for everybody, guys. When you are speaking, you need to select and you, you need you to, to prioritize your speech. Who are you going to give priority to? So tell me, what do you, in what cases the doer is less important? Let me give you some context in the cases when the doer is less important, okay? Look at this. When you are talking about inventions, for example, the invention of the telephone, the doer becomes less important. What is important is the telephone. So we call it, when did Alexander Graham Bell invent the telephone? If you ask this question, the most important thing is Alexander Graham Bell. In the first example, the probably this, this uh, expression can happen in the, what's the name of this? In a documentary about Alexander Graham Bell, right? But if we talk about the history of the telephone, we need to change the protagonist role. And this is when we use the second part, transforming the verb into a description. And if you have this result, when was the telephone invented? In the second case, Alexander Graham Bell disappeared. He's not important anymore. He's not relevant. Do you have any observation here? The Easy. verb was yes. in past participle in the passive voice and in the other, in the normal sentence, it's mm -hmm. in past simple, no? In simple past. 
Why is it past participle? It is past participle because it, the past participle is a passive adjective. Or it's a description in simple words. You are transforming the verb into a description. Yes or no? Difficult, easy. Do you understand the part of the description? Do you know what we're talking about here? That's it, okay. So this is it. This is a classic example of passive voice in past. In the first example, what words are providing the information in past? How do we know this information is in past? The auxiliary did. Correct. In the question, the auxiliary did is giving us that information. Oh, and what happens when we answer this question? Right. In the second example, the verb is giving the time. Right. Look at the other example and tell me what is the word that is giving us the time. In the second one. The verb. B. The verb B. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So this is the first note, the second note that I want you to take. In passive voice. The verb B determines the time of the same. Yes or no? So, in what cases is it necessary to use passive voice? When the when we want to give a more emphasis in the person affected by who the person uh, who the person two 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 ah okay to the person affected by to the person affected by the image that's correct every time you want to give more emphasis to the person affected you are going to use passive voice the easy part about this and the most relevant part is that I'm going to give you a little guide on the verbs, example of verbs when passive is more often than the active. For example, when you are talking about inventions and discoveries, the words invented, discovered, created, found, you know, are usually verbs, no, are verbs that usually are used as, as adjectives. 
imagine it green or orange what do you want let's call them orange because descriptions are orange in this case okay does it happen only with inventions and discoveries the answer is no Inventions and discoveries is one of the topics where passive voice happens. This also happens when you are talking about authority. Let's check these new words. This is probably new words for you. The word ban, the word forbid, and the word prohibit. Actually, let me look at the dictionary. The word ban is B1. I don't know if you, if you know what is this. The ban is B1. Allow is pretty easy. Allow is A2, but forbid, forbid is B2. That's a little bit more tricky. Prohibit in other ways is B2 as well. Okay, so let's read these examples. Help me, uh, Elsie. Ban, mm -hmm. um, synonym prohibit. Mm -hmm. The law effectively bans smoking in all public places. All public places. Continue, continue. Only this? No, continue. Oh. The next one's too. Don't, don't allow. Synonym, not let. Mm -hmm. The manager and the government don't allow. Allow? Exactly. Allow. Good. Don't allow the audience to record the movie. Record. Record. To record. Record, to record the movie. To record the movie. Uh -huh. um, forbid. Synonym. Ban. The, po the police forbid Soviet citizens from traveling abroad. Abroad. Mm, prohibit synonym forbid the police prohibits smoking on school grounds grounds which are prohibiting past prohibited in past that's it you said prohibited you are correct Tell. Mm, in, in, yeah, you said Ah, it's in present. Sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. I thought it was in the past. You are correct. The, pol the policy prohibits. Prohibits. Ah. Mm -hmm. That's much better. <laughs> That's it. That's pretty much it. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about authority. Is okay. It? Yes. Tell me. What, what? What is the difference between police with C mm -hmm. and white? White. Ah, okay. No police. This is policy. Policy, no. like política. Ah, uh, Spanish, exactly. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> don't speak Spanish. Sorry. Yeah, a policy is a a, a rule. Uh, an official right an official law in uh in the laws of a place mm. and police is the people 
<laughs> Got it. This is the way, and this is the reason why we need to understand the context of the conversation. Because if we are talking specifically about authority, prohibition, uh, laws, rules, you know, the government, a manager, your boss, then it's very, very common to use this structure in a different way. You have the example number one, the law effectively bans smoking in all public places. But if you use it as passive voice, it becomes smoking is banned in all public places effectively. This is the same meaning. It's not necessary to speak about the law because we know who bans smoking. Actually, with passive voice, one of the things that we take with passive voice is that smoking is, no, no, no. Uh, when you are talking about authority, the authority is so obvious that it's not necessary to say. It. So take that as a note. When you are talking about authority, it's so obvious that it's better to use passive voice. Okay, let's talk about that. When we are talking about authority, this authority is so obvious that it's better to use passive voice to avoid saying it explicitly. I'm going to give you other two examples so you can take a note. Questions? You mentioned that uh, when you use passive voice, it's not necessary to talk the person, no? For example, in the she was invited to the party. Uh, invited. Invited, sorry, to the party. Um, I understand um, for the structure, you understand that is passive, passive voice, no? And it's not necessary to put who invited to. Exactly. Or by the by the structure, we know who. Ah, uh, okay. That's actually there. Let's do a change over there. Uh, because okay. that's something that we need to, to take into consideration. When we speak to an American person, the American person mm -hmm. doesn't know what is passive voice. Mm -hmm. We never understand like the structure or the, mm -hmm. the grammatical words. But I understand that I don't need to speak about the authority because mm -hmm. that's the obvious. Okay. Thanks to passive voice. Okay. Well, it's more common this in informal conversations. 
in any. It can be in formal any, uh, or informal, okay. especially casual. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Any times, any times. Thank you. There we go, guys. Any other question? That's pretty much it, right? I'm going to give you another use of very obvious subjects, OK? Especially when we are talking about about news. Look at this. Imagine you go you go through the parking lot and your car is not there. I really hope that doesn't happen to you. I am actually touching wood in this moment. I really hope so. What do you say? In this particular case, my car was stolen. Why do we use passive voice in this case? The verb stolen in past participle is the verb steal in present. So here you have someone stole my car. But because we don't know who, then the word someone becomes irrelevant. Let's think about that. The word someone becomes irrelevant to the story. So this is when we are going to use our third case of use for passive voice. When the subject or who did the action is not only obvious, it's irrelevant. That's the third case of use of passive voice. The first one is when you want to give an intention or a stronger meaning to the subject. The second one is when the authority is too obvious. And the third one is when the doer is just irrelevant. It's better to use directly the affected object. And there we go, the three cases when you need to use passive voice. Is there any question now? I think there is none. So think about this, guys. This is going to be the first section of the lesson for you. OK, we are going to take into consideration The following structure is the object plus B and then the past participle. And if it's necessary, you use a connector by to talk about who did the action. These are the topics when passive voice is mostly used. 
when you are talking about disasters and emergencies, crime and punishment, inventions and discoveries, reactions, instruction, identification, permission, or culture. Many of these words are B2. So here you have a list of words for you to study for your glossary if you need them. Tomorrow, we are going to practice all this into a conversation and in more examples. So try to study this so we can talk about it. Any question? No, thank you. Cool. Well, my people, we finished for today. Have a very happy night. We'll see you tomorrow. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. See you. Thank Bye -bye. you, teacher. Good night, Later. everyone. You too. Good night.